I have got a problem with my electric fence. I am running uh, just about a thousand volts. Top number is not even a thousand. Point eight kilovolts. Um, but the handy thing about it, about this little dude right here, it will tell me where the fault is. And by fault, that means uh, somewhere where this wire is touching the ground or touching a fence or touching a metal post. Uh, in some way, this hot wire is being grounded out. And this little dude right here will tell me how to do that or tell me where it is. So when I put it on here and hit, I put it on this, instead of just this little probe here, I put it inside here. It will tell me they're at, right at 28 amps, which is too high. That means the current is going uh, somewhere too fast and it points in the direction it's going. The current is running this way. The fault is this way. So I just have to trace it out. So let's, let's look for it. So here we are on the outside of the fence. That's where I was showing you a while ago on my property. I'm on my neighbor's property right now and I'm checking the fence so the fault should be going this way. A while ago, remember, if it was going this way, so I'm on the other side of the fence, so it's going this way now. So I test it. And see the arrow? Shit tells me. There's a lot of amps going somewhere. Going out somewhere where they should stay in the fence. And it's that away. So I'm still on the hunt. It's showing me. Push the button. It's showing me that there's amps going into the ground 26 amps going where they shouldn't be going that should say about five amps or something like that i mean it should be real real low and it's saying that it is still to the right well it doesn't take a brain surgeon once you get down here to look and see that a limb from a dead tree that old dead tree right there couple limbs have fallen off and they are shorting it out as you can see my fence it has bent the fence down enough to where the um, my fence the electric fence rather is touching this fence so it's grounding it out there and there and there okay you get the picture so, I have found a problem. I'm not dressed for it. I need to come back down in boots. Kind of swampy area, snaky. Uh, come down in boots. I, I'm hoping I won't have to do any lifting or cutting. That maybe I can just uh, get up under here with my fork of my tractor and pick it up and throw it my way or his way or some way. Uh, we'll see what happens when I get all this mess off and kind of straighten this problem up. It has bent down the top barbed wire. You can see the the uh, barbed wire coming down, and from the other end, you can see that on the top of that uh, second post there, barbed wire is coming down. So that's a lot of weight. Uh, it's dead stuff, but it's still heavy, and it hit pretty hard. We had some uh, a lot of wind, a lot of rain a few weeks ago, and it's time for me to fix this. So I'll come down here on my tractor and get her done. Final product. I just picked up some of the wood, threw it that way, some of the wood, and just the, the heavy stuff. I just couldn't get it back over the fence. <clears throat> It'll rot. It's it's a rotten now. It, it'll be gone by next year probably. This is it. I fixed it up. Uh, he built a couple of years ago. Built the barbed wire fence. He runs some bulls in here from time to time. I asked him if I could come on the back side of it. <clears throat> and uh, put this field fencing and I did 
he said I could, and I did. Then I asked him if I could put the hot wire on his side to keep coyotes out, and he said I could. So my point is, um, this was all laying down. As I showed you before, this was all laying down and laying on the hot wire. This, uh, and I need to tighten that up, it's a little loose. Uh, was laying on the hot wire and uh, uh, was shorting out, was shorting the hot wire out. So I'm gonna go back up and test it. I'll show you the test when I get up, turn the hot wire back on. Obviously it's not on right now or I would be crying. Whew. I am absolutely sweaty, nasty. Filthy. So, I'm going to the house and get something cold drink. And, uh, uh, test the, uh, tester. I'm going to be spraying this, and I know y'all going to grab at me, some of you, for spraying, but, you know, when, when you take care of 5,000 feet of fence and you're 63 years old and you do it with a weed eater, you just let me know and I'll pat you on the back. But I can't do it. So, We'll come in here and spray uh, the entire fence line to keep uh, things like that from growing up on the fence, things like that, the weeds and vines, and that also keeps it uh, from shorting out. The fence does a pretty good job of cutting the weeds, but I help it, so, shoot, I'm tired. Let me show you what kind of volts we're running when I turn that little dude on after I pick up my glove. So here's the moment of truth, um, I'd like for it to be. 11, 12,000 volts, but anything over 10, I'm pretty happy with. It's showing 10.5. And then let me put it on this. See, it's showing 8 amps, and that there's a fault that way. But that fault is, uh, the 8 amps is nothing. Like uh, before, it was running, what, 30, 30, 33? What, I don't know whether, do you remember that? I don't. Uh, 30 amps, which means it was dumping the entire load of this fence into the ground this way. But now it's just got, if it's around 5 or 6 amps, uh, you have no obstructions whatsoever. That's 8. That's because I do have some weeds and stuff on it. But I'm running 10.7, 10.6, that's 10,600 volts. So I'm pretty pleased with it and uh, my experience on this has been, uh, there's been several times when I cleared an obstacle like, it, like that and turned it back on, when I did have some weeds and such on it, and it, uh, it raised up about a thousand volts in, in two or three days. So it, and, that's, and then I went back and looked and some of those weeds were, were dead. So it just burnt through them and, and killed them. So that's probably what's going to happen. Again, I'm going to spray that fence line, but uh, spray all my fence lines. But, um, Anyway, we're running uh, ten and a half thousand volts, so I'll knock a pooey out of you. I tell you what. <laughs> so let me show you the difference in um, between the two testers that I have. Um, this is a five shock, and this one has served me well for many years. I, I've had this 10, 15 years or more. The back of it came off. It's, this one takes a nine volt battery, but the uh, the back of it came off, and I just put some duct tape on it. But the best this will do, first of all, this one has a probe. You have to put it in the ground, stick it in the ground, like so, and then touch it to your fence, and it'll tell you that you've got, it's got 9.9. .9. Sorry, I'm a little shaky. I've been working on my fence. And it's about 95 degrees. But it's flashing 9.9, 9.9, every time it pulses. That's because this one will only go up to 9,900 volts. My fence charger is uh, over 12,000 volts. So um, so this will only tell me that it's 9,9, which is good. 9,9 is good. 9,9 hurts you. Uh, but this fence charger will not tell me anything about the... Uh, about whether or not I've got a fault. If I'm showing, in other words, if I'm showing, uh, if this fence charger is showing uh, 1,000 volts, it says maybe 1.2, and I got one, uh, uh, 1,200 volts, uh, then I know I've got a fault somewhere. I know that this wire, the hot wire, is touching 
the ground or it's touching the fence or it's touching a t-post or it's touching something to ground it out but this um, tester will not tell me where that's at the other one will give me direction uh, as to where to find that fault and um, so that's why I like the other one better I'll, let, I'll show you it now this is the one I really like it's uh, it's more expensive this one is uh, about a hundred bucks the other one if I remember right it's about 30 maybe uh, but this one will tell me where the fault is and it comes in handy in fact I, as I'm doing this video this is really a two-stage video about two weeks apart I just went and found another fault it was it um, was on the very back of my fence I mean 10 feet away from the end of my fence but this kept telling me to go to which direction to go to look for the fault you know it kept giving me an error to go that way to look for the fault um, so I just followed it all the way out next time I'll start at the end and work my way this way but uh, this one now and this one does not have a probe your your hand on the back of it grounds it out and you don't get shocked or anything but it just grounds it out it's got a mode for um, for a voice I mean for a, a musical chime or you can turn that off and that is telling me right now I've got 11,300 volts 11.3 the 7 amps means I've got a little grass on it or something like that that's normal 5, 6, 7 amps is normal And uh, but anyway it's telling me i got 11.2, 11.3 that's 11,300 volts Okay, so that thing is hotter than a pistol you can test it on the end of it or you can test it in that little groove right there the groove is where you put it when you're Put, put it in the groove right there then you're uh, that's where you want to that's where you put it to test to, to, to find your fault when it starts giving you direction otherwise you just put it on the, the very tip there okay this has saved me so much time and worry and wonder wondering where my fence uh, where my fault is I just went like I say this is the second time I showed you the first time when I pulled that uh, that log off of it or those uh, that tree that fell on it well I just went back down there because it was saying 1.2 kilovolts which is nothing and so I knew I had an issue we had some rain uh, a couple of nights ago storm knocked out the power a little bit for a little bit and sure enough there's a big old limb that had fallen on on the uh, the fence and had pressed the fence up pressed the fence up to the uh, uh, to the T-post and here's what happens And when, you, when it starts faulting on that wire, anything that's grounded, uh, you're losing it. You're losing your power. So uh, I'm gonna put a link to the. I'll put a link to the fire shock because you may want to just save some money and use the fire shock. But if you wanna, if you've got some fence and you're you're always trying trying to find out where the fault is, this right here can save you some time. It is. Uh, it's already paid for itself, as far as I'm concerned. Just uh, three or four times that I've used it to look for a fault. So, uh, but let me, I'll put a, again, I'll put a link to this one. I'll put a link to the fire shock. And you just pick whichever one you like if you need to, uh, if you need a fence charger. Or if you need a fence tester. And I'll put a link to the fence charger uh, that I use also. So, uh, and it, uh, it is a mammer jammer. I mean, that dude. 11.3. Sometimes it'll show 12, so I've got probably a little bit of grass on it. Uh, might be a little vine or something on it, but it at that voltage, it'll burn through it. It'll kill it. It'll kill that vine. It'll kill that little piece of grass. So I just want to show you that and um, show you the difference between the two, the fire shock and the speed right. I like the speed right. The fire shock has served me well. Don't get me wrong. I've had it. Oh, I, I'd say at least 15 years, because um, I've had electric fences for 15 or 20 years, probably more than that. And that's probably one of the first ones I bought. So anyway, uh, it has served me well, and it has lasted a long, long time. But this one here does so much more. So I like it. Whew. We're gone.